Everybody, I said, praise the Lord. Tonight, the Lord will bless you specially. Everything you've been praying for, all that you've been looking to God for, salvation, healing, deliverance, miracles from God, the Lord will pour upon everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name because we know you are good. You are good to all, to every individual. You are good to all, to every family. You are good to all. You are good to our country here. And you are good to every nation. We're asking tonight you open the heavens for everyone. And your blessings will come upon everyone. Great peace. Great healing. Great deliverance. Great miracle upon everyone tonight. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have done it. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, God bless everyone. You can sit down. Tonight we we'll begin a special GCK. Global Crusade. Coming to everyone with power, with unction, with overflowing anointing. You will not miss your miracle. I said you will not miss your miracle. Tonight I'm looking at Luke chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 10. Luke chapter 2 verse 10 And the angel said unto them Fear not For behold I bring you good tidings of good of great joy Which shall be to all people An angel came from heaven And he came to do shepherds at night and he announced to them what they needed to acknowledge in their lives what they have been searching for what they have been praying for what they have been dreaming of the angel came and told them first of all he said fear not all your fears are taken away all my fears are taken away when christ comes the savior the prince of peace everything you feared you feared in the past and then you borrow your past and you look at that to make up your future fears in the past fears at the present time and fears in the future the angel said that now that that same Christ is coming upon your life fear not he will save your soul fear not it will give you peace fear not it reconcile you with heaven Fear not, it will remove your mountain. Fear not, it will heal your sickness. How will that happen? Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. That great joy is for you. 
that great salvation is for you that great miracle is for you it shall be for all people look at verse 11 it says for unto you is born this day in the city of david a savior which is christ the lord think about it as if this is for you in particular for unto you unto you every problem you have unto you is born this day in the city of david a savior that will save you from sin save you from sickness save you from satanic power save you from every sin that had bombarded your life until today where are you a savior has come to you a healer has come to you a deliverer has come to you a redeemer has come to you what's his name the angel said he is christ the lord then he tells us in verse 12 it says and they shall be a sign unto you ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger and then in verse 13 and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying verse 14 glory to God for the peace that comes glory to God for the joy of heaven come to earth glory to God for miraculous wonders that he comes to give us glory to God for the peace for the pardon glory to God for the power he brings from heaven glory to God for the miracle you are going to receive today glory to God glory to God in the highest and on earth peace on earth where we are now peace on earth where you are seated there peace peace in your heart peace in your home peace all around you from tonight as you come and you receive Christ into your life peace on earth and goodwill toward men from that passage I read to you now we're looking at unique salutary peace through faith in Christ peace unique coming in your soul coming in your heart the kind of peace you had never known that no turmoil on earth can disturb peace unique there is salutary there the peace that comes with salvation and it is through faith in christ christ the same christ christ the saving christ christ the mighty christ as powerful today as he ever was unique salutary peace through faith in christ tonight you are going to have it say i am going to have it
We're looking at three things before we pray. Number one, announcing the good news of peace. Angel coming from heaven. Announcing the good news of peace. To everyone. To you. To me. To her. To him. In that nation. Online. Angels announcement coming to you. Announcing the good news of peace. Number two, acknowledging the great need of peace. You have to acknowledge it in your own heart. That what God has brought is the most important thing in your life. I acknowledge. I acknowledge, I affirm that actually I need peace, peace with God, peace within myself, and peace with my neighbor. It's a need we cannot deal without. Acknowledging the great need of peace. Number three, at advancing in God's nature of peace. That's the nature of God. Anyone that comes near God, anyone reconciled with God, anyone that becomes a member of the family of God, the nature of God will pass into him. And the nature of God is not the nature of violence. It's not the nature of cruelty. It's not the nature of fighting. The nature of God is the nature of peace. And when we come to know the Lord, He transfers and transmits that same peace he has that he is. He transfers that into our lives. Advancing in God's nature. Without the nature of God, we'll be retrogressing. We will not advance. Because it is only God that promotes us, that lifts us up. And when we have that nature of God, He advances us, He lifts us up, He makes us to have progress. Advancing in God's nature of peace. Look at the announcement there, number one. Number one, announcing the good news of peace. As we read already, God sent an angel from far away heaven here to the earth. He says, go tell them. Go tell every man, every woman. Go tell every person on earth that that peace we could not have for ourselves. The Father in heaven, God of all peace, is now sending that down to us. And the angel said, it will be for all people. It is for you tonight. I said it is for you tonight. Isaiah chapter 52. And I'm reading there from verse 6. It says, Therefore, my people shall know my name. Uh, uh, that's the beginning. My people shall know my name. You know his name as the Prince of Peace. You know his name as the Savior. 
you know his name as the Lord you know his name as the breaker of every yoke in life therefore my people shall know my name therefore they shall know in that day that i am he that does speak behold it is i he said he is the one speaking he is speaking to you tonight and with his voice with his word peace will come in your life and then, in, in, and then in verse 7, it says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that publisheth, promotes, proclaims, and declares peace. that bringeth good tidings of good that publishes salvation that says unto zion thy god reigneth he publishes peace he comes to give you peace as you open your heart and say let the peace of peace come in the peace of the lord that rules and reigns will come in your life when there's no peace we're torn apart when there's no peace there's confusion in the heart when there's no peace there's commotion in the heart when there's no peace there's no health it's when the peace of god settles in your heart when the peace of god per uh, pervades all your life it will change your thoughts it will change your mind it will change your action your hand will feel the peace your feet will go in the direction of peace your mind will think the thoughts of peace your activities will be activities of peace your relationship will be a relationship of peace your interaction will be an interaction of peace with everybody and the lord has come tonight to declare unto you the peace of god that will reign in your heart hey, look at verse 10 of that isaiah chapter 52 the lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations in all nations, peace. In every heart, open to the Lord, confessing to the Lord, I've not been having peace. I've not been enjoying peace. I've not been experiencing peace. As so you open your mind and open your heart and open your life unto the Lord, abundant peace will come in your heart. Any nation where you are, any community where you are, as you hear what the Lord has said announcing the good news of peace and you know what the restlessness have been causing your life and you say i abandon that i confess that i forsake that every thought every imagination 
every action that has taken peace away from my heart I confess I forsake I reject Christ Prince of Peace enter into my heart when Christ enters your heart when the Prince of Peace enters your heart peace universal peace with God peace with man peace from heaven peace on earth in whatever condition you have been in the past the peace of God from tonight will reign in your heart that's how we know that we have the Prince of Peace that's how we know we have the peace that comes with salvation if somebody says I'm saved I'm a child of God but there's no peace in the heart there's no peace in his thinking there's no peace in his action there's no peace in interaction with people that person to be very sure of real real salvation has to open the door of the heart for the prince of peace to come in it's not good enough to go to church in the morning and in the afternoon of that sunday we're fighting we're violent It's not good to bend the knee and bow the head for the Prince of Peace and the worship. And then outside, we're cruel to all the people. That one is hypocrisy. But when the Prince of Peace comes in, the peace of God will reign in our hearts, in our mind, in our lives, in our interaction with every other person. And then he says, all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. All the ends of the earth. You here tonight. Him there over there. And herself over there. Everyone everywhere. Meet the Lord and meet the Prince of Peace. I welcome peace in my heart. I welcome the Prince of Peace in my heart. The peace that pervades every area of your life. In Romans chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 15. Romans chapter 10, verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful at the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. How beautiful at the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. If the preachers of the gospel of peace, if their feet are beautiful, then the preachers of the message of fighting, violence, their feet are ugly. And before you can preach, you have to possess. Before you can preach, you have to enjoy the peace yourself. And then you possess. You provide. You preach. You delight in the gospel of peace. And your feet will be beautiful. 
Say amen now. Yeah. Your heart will be beautiful. The beauty of the heart reflects in the face. The ugliness of the heart reflects on the face. It's when you possess the peace of God. You enjoy the peace of God. Inside you, there is the peace of God. Then it says, feet beautiful, face beautiful, life beautiful, appearance beautiful. Because the peace of God reigns in your heart. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of great things. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. It's talking about some religious people in the land of Israel. At that time, it says, they have not all obeyed the gospel of peace. They have not all invited the prince of peace to their lives. They have not all interacted with the peace of God by faith. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who has believed our report. Then in verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. To link up with God, we need faith. To access the peace of God, we need faith. To link up, hook up with the peace of God and the salvation of God, we need faith. We'll forget ourselves and we'll look at Christ, the Prince of Peace. Tonight, I believe in God. Say that, I believe in God. It's that faith that brought you here. It's that faith that makes you have expectation. It's that faith that makes you say, once I have the call tonight, I'm going to go to God through Christ. And then the Prince of Peace will make your heart, your life, have peace. With peace, there will be salvation. With peace, there will be healing. With peace, there will be deliverance. With peace, the miracle of God will flow into your heart freely. Say, I believe. Tonight, I come to Christ. Say that now. Tonight, I come to Christ. And the Prince of Peace will reign in my heart. Amen. Look at number two there. Number two, acknowledging the great need of peace. I acknowledge peace, the need in my life. You see, when we don't have peace with our neighbors, we lose a lot. Help us cannot help us. We don't have peace with them. 
providers cannot provide for us if we don't have peace with them. Carers cannot care for us if we don't have peace with them. Philanthropic people cannot have, uh, provide anything for us if we don't have peace with them. Enemies cannot reconcile with us if we don't have peace with them. Life is miserable if we don't have peace with people around us. And God cannot accept us into heaven if we don't have peace with him. Christ cannot bring us into all the provisions of Calvary if we don't have peace with him. You see that all around you, you'll be a lonely, lone ranger if you don't have peace. We need peace with everyone around. And we come to acknowledge before the Lord. No single person can live happily on earth without peaceful interaction, association, reconciliation, relationship with people. And so you acknowledge the great need of peace. How does that happen? When I say I cannot manufacture peace, I cannot do the peace by myself. There is a creator in heaven. The name God Almighty is the God of peace. He is the one that creates the peace through the Lord Jesus Christ for soul, for spirit, for body, for existence on earth. In Romans chapter 5, reading from verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. That word justify means we were guilty. We were brought into the law court. Our conscience argued against us. The record in the book of God argues against us. Our character argues against us. We're guilty and condemned. And if we stop there, we'll go into the prison after being judged that we're guilty. The prison is an eternal prison. The guilty sinner, the condemned sinner, will be there forever and ever. But Christ, the Prince of Peace, Christ, the one that had no sin, the perfect one, the sinless one, the spotless one, Christ, a Savior. Christ our Lord, our advocate, he came and he said, I'll bear his punishment. Even though we are guilty and condemned, Christ has now come to take our sin, to take our punishment. To take the consequence of all the evil we have done. And it says, therefore, being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
no other means of having peace no other means of manufacturing peace and putting in your heart in the day and in the night that commotion confusion will be there but we look unto christ the christ that died for us the christ that took our guilt away the christ that took our punishment away we have total or reserved faith in him therefore now being justified by faith we rely on him we rest on him and we put all the weight and all the load of our guilt upon him and through that faith in christ we now have peace with god understand if you have peace with everybody around you you try to use psychology but psychology doesn't work with god it only works with some people around you we will try to use philosophy and remember philosophy doesn't work with god we can only manipulate human beings if you have peace with every man every woman on earth and you don't have peace with god you cannot spend eternity in heaven So, psychology doesn't get you to heaven. Philosophy doesn't get you to heaven. Maneuvering by human beings doesn't get you to heaven. Only peace with God gets you to heaven. And the only way to have that peace with God is through our Lord Jesus Christ. You're coming to the kingdom of God. A change happens in your life. Now you have the peace of God. And with that peace, they same Jesus will bring solution to every problem in your life. Tonight, as we link up with Jesus. Tonight, as we believe in Jesus solution will come to every problem of your life acts chapter 10 verse 36 acts chapter 10 verse 36 the word which god sent unto the children of israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Peace by Jesus Christ. And he is the Lord of all in every nation, in all nations. And as you receive Christ tonight, Prince of Peace, come to my heart. I confess I didn't have peace but now I confess you are the peace of my life every problem in your life he'll come in he'll take away look at verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. That same Jesus is here tonight. 
as we mention his name. Uh, uh, let me ask you. You're sitting down quietly. You're looking at this direction. Then somebody mentions your name. What do you do? I didn't know there's somebody here that knew my name. And then as we're looking in this direction. And you heard your name. You turn around. You want to know where that voice mentioning your name is coming from. And he looks at you face to face. And he smiles. And he mentions your name again. He smiled. And the way he pronounced your name attracted you. And then he beckons on you. Come. When, whenever we mention the name of Jesus, he looks our direction. Who is mentioning my name there? I am so and so. I need your peace. Who is calling on my name there? I am so and so. I need your healing. Who mentions my name there? I am so and so. I am a sinner. I want your salvation. Anytime we mention his name, he looks our direction. Mention that name. I said, shout out that name. Now he's looking at your direction. Look at him, he's coming to you now. His salvation is coming to you now. His healing is coming to you now. And nobody can block the way of Christ coming to you tonight. Behold, he comes. The Savior comes. The Prince of Peace comes. And the, the, the healer comes. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Remember Jesus the same yesterday, today and forever. God is still with him. God is still with Christ. And today he comes with all the power of heaven and earth. It's going to touch your life. It's going to turn everything around. Look at Romans chapter 16 verse 20. Romans chapter 16 verse 20. And the God of peace that's the name of God and the God of peace and tonight he shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly every evil thing that Satan brought from his heart and he wants to throw at you tonight the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Tonight, God will grant you pardon. Tonight, God will grant you peace. Tonight, God will grant you power. When you stand to pray tonight, you will stand on top of every mountain in your life. When you stand to pray tonight, all sicknesses will come under your feet. You will match them, you will trample on them. 
you will live here tonight with victory in your soul. Peace and pardon in your heart. Life of victory will follow you home tonight in Jesus' name. Because the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. 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 Tonight it will happen to you. Look at number three here. Advancing in God's nature of peace. I came to tell you tonight, you will advance. You will move up. You will get up. You will go forward. 